Good afternoon, I'm Candy Noble, and I represent House District 89. That is a district that's in uh, Collin County in the DFW area. I'm the mother of a current teacher. I'm the daughter of retired educators and the daughter-in-law of a retired teacher. The way we treat Texas legislators, I mean Texas teachers, is very personal to me. I take the commitment that we made to Texas education and to our teachers very seriously. In Collin County alone, we have almost 9,000 retired teachers. The matter of a 13th check is not a luxury for many of our retired teachers. You may not realize this, but we have more than 100 retired teachers that are over 100 years old. More than 50% of our retired teachers receive less than $2,000 a month to live on. Teachers have dealt with enough truancy in their careers. They shouldn't have to deal with it when it comes to their own Texas House members. Today we, hand, uh, we will hand out a list that will be available of the Texas House members that are absent. Each of them have hundreds, if not thousands, of retired teachers in their districts that are waiting for them to show up. This list is constantly changing, and we're really glad that it is as more and more of our peers return to the Capitol. We're here. We're ready to pass the 13th check bill on our retired teachers' behalf. Over 440,000 Texas retired teachers need our fellow absentee House members to show up and vote. Let's end Texas House member truancy and get this bill across the finish line. Thank you, Representatives uh, Patty and Noble. Uh, one thing for y'all before we get to questions, I'm gonna ask if there's opposition to this legislation to help the teachers. And the answer is no. It's universally supported. However, as you heard, it has the potential to die of neglect. Neglect by members who neglected their duty, neglected their oath, and neglected their constituents. The loss in some accounts of this conversation is why we're doing this now. And that's an easy answer. We have the money. That was not the case when we certified the budget when we finished the last regular session. <clears throat> now, and, and believe me, anybody who has followed the budget process understands that this is the case. So now we have this opportunity. If our colleagues really do support the measure to help our retired teachers, we call on them to come home, to get to work, and join us in voting for this bill. Anything less is just political opinion. Texas teachers and Texas voters deserve better. Uh, with that, we have to answer questions that all have. There was a bill to provide a cost of living increase in the House that had enough co-sponsors to pass the chamber. Why uh, wasn't that a priority in the regular session? Yeah, there just wasn't the money to do that. The COLA money would come directly out of the uh, TRS retirement fund itself, and it doesn't have the actual strength to do that. That's why we proposed the 13th check. Uh, it was talked about during the regular session. We also couldn't afford it at the time when we scored these items. Now we are ready to do it. We're ready to proceed with that. In fact, Dr. Bonham, who spoke to you yesterday, chairman of our Appropriations Committee, said that he also want to talk about the coal. Uh, and, you know, all of this is, you know, it has to be actually really sound and requires a good bit of study. You know, how many teachers at what age? I don't want to go too far on the road just to chair that committee. But it's something that we would like to do, which have to do with the financial parameters that are offered to you at the time. That's why we're standing here today saying, let's do the 13th check. COLA, something we should talk about. Not to get too in the weeds, but I thought Please. with the COLA, it was actually sound. It can't go over 31 years for funding, but it was at 29, which would have been permissive under the rules. Well, and then we're also wondering, what are we doing about the 13th check? So both of those together, we're kind of saying, let's get done, we can certainly get done, come back to the COLA. So that's something we really want to do. And again, you know, what is the amount of the COLA, and then what duration, how far back do you go? So that's kind of what's in play. But that's why we have, and that's why we have committee hearings. That's why we bring forth witnesses. That's why we have amendments and testimony so we can vet these things out. And the conversation you are having needs to be amplified by only about 60 more members. And then we have it going. Sir, why did this 13th check legislation uh, 
with overwhelming bipartisan support, as you stated, uh, died during the regular session uh, after it was set to calendars in April. Was it strictly a, a budget issue, like you mentioned? Yes, sir. So the, the budget itself, one of the last things to do with the state budget, 250 plus billion dollars, is we have to have the comptroller certified to say, are you really going to have that money? And that wasn't done until very late. And what it revealed was, we didn't have the money for the 13th check at that time. In fact, that was confirmed. And, and Dr. Bonin, uh, yesterday when he was uh, speaking to y'all, uh, provided that information to me. So that's amply demonstrated. Now, the question is, if you really want to do it, now's the time to do it. And we're ready. <laughs> um, has Governor Abbott indicated to you that uh, the 13th check will be on the agenda for the next session. He's already said it, he's the government policy and this one ended. He is, I can't speak for the governor. Uh, he has not made that representation to me, may have to others. Uh, we're looking at this as do or not. It needs to happen now. And there are other issues I would point out, not to get ahead of our other messages, but uh, there are issues about the employment of the people who work in the legislative branch, that there are certain deadlines that have to be met, and another special session is going to create a catastrophic situation for the staffs who work here and the families that are having our health care coverage. So please understand, we can't put off these things to another time that's uncertain. We have the opportunity now. And that's what we're telling the colleagues, come home now, the flights all day long. Do you agree with the governor's veto of uh, Article 10 of the budget? Well, I think the governor wanted to send a message to people to say, come back and do all your work. And if we would show up and work, it's just an inconvenience. If people stay away and use their staffs as pawns in this process and impact their lives, uh, that veto is going to have a much more uh, significant effect. And, uh, so I, I, I support the governor doing everything he can to move legislation forward. All right, y'all.